So there are some times when it ends up being the weaker hand asking the questions. Um, but those that's definitely the exception that proves the rule. Most of the time it's the strong hand uh, asking the questions. And what we, we try and achieve is the strong hand ans asking the questions, the weaker hand answering the questions, and the weaker hand ending up as dummy. But we're not totally hooked up on that. And uh, sometimes it's impossible to achieve in any case. So sometimes it is the stronger hand that's asking the questions that goes down as dummy. Um, and generally, there's nothing we can do about that. But we do try and avoid it. And there are things in place which you'll have seen, like swapping one spade and one no trump as a positive response to try and maximize the times when it's the weaker hand that ends up as dummy. Um, but you can't always be sure whether you are actually achieving the best result by doing that in any case. So we're not that bothered about it. OK, so just to stress that, there, there is absolutely no such thing as a standard set of asking bids. Um, uh, various people have proposed various sets of asking bids. Um, the ones that I use started out life as those set out in uh, Eric Janisterne's book on precision. Um, and those were broadly the same as what Belladonna Garozzo put a set out in their book on super precision, which is the, the standard volume on the topic. However, OCP has departed considerably uh, from those. And we've added um, some ones recently. In fact, we've added an additional um, asking bid of exclusion beta in the last uh, couple of months. So these are things which are constantly under review. Um, and uh, certainly, if you use the set of asking bids that OCP uses, the only people you will be able to play those with is somebody else who's learnt OCP and plays it. Um, but the chances of you having any kind of a meeting of minds with anybody else, uh, whatever set of asking bids you're used to, the chances of you actually being able to sit down and use them without quite a lot of discussion to start with is quite small. OK, so there are some asking bids which are pretty much universal. Um, but I mean, even those, uh, you know, are sometimes called different things by different versions of precision. Um, so even there, you'd probably need to have a fair amount of discussion. Really, this kind of a system, you need to play with a fairly regular partner or somebody who has the same instinctive understanding. In other words, most people who play OCP will will be able to sit down opposite each other and play the system. And there may be some few things where they're used to playing things slightly differently, but the majority of the system you'll be able to sit and play. But you won't be able to sit and play with anybody else who doesn't play OCP, um, not without a lot of discussion first. So asking bids take time, and they take effort, and they take um, a lot of practice to get right. Um, Jason Hackett and I um, practiced this system for several months before we actually started um, using them in anger in competi competitive uh, situations. Um, so, so don't expect that you're going to pick these up necessarily fully, even the first time through this 
set of teaching sessions. Um, you know, there are people who have been playing OCP for several years who are actually still finding out things new that they've forgotten or not fully learned to start with. Um, but it is well worth the effort. OK, um, that's one of the reasons why you can't have a meeting of minds, because people call all these asking bids different things. And sometimes you're actually talking about the same thing, but it's called something different. And that causes a lot of confusion. Um, so please get yourself an OCP partner if you haven't got one, or try and practice OCP with other people who, who play the system and learn it with them and uh, you'll get much better results. OK, any questions so far about what I've just explained so far? Um, bear in mind that, that tonight's session is almost all general guidelines and uh, rules that underpin the asking bids. Uh, we won't really get into any specific asking bids uh, until next week. By the way, I apologize in advance. The reason that this session was uh, moved from 9 p.m. till 10 p.m. is that I was still working at 9 o'clock, um, uh, 15 miles away from here. Uh, and I haven't had the time to go through and double check my lesson notes. So uh, if there is anything which I have to correct, um, because it's something I would have changed when I checked the lesson notes. I apologize in advance, but I haven't had the time to prepare uh, for this session as well as I would normally like. OK, let's get to some of the ground rules and terminology for asking bids. <coughs> OK, so all asking bids unlike, for example, queue bidding, where in queue bidding, your queue bids relate to the suit that you're bidding. If that's the case with asking bids, with response, asking bid responses, that is purely by coincidence. Um, usually, the actual ask will be relating to the suit that's bid. But even there, that's not universally true. Um, uh, and, and you will see as we go through um, the situations where even just relays above the last bid um, can be an asking bid in a particular suit and it doesn't necessarily relate to the suit that's actually being bid. For example, uh, if we have a sequence where opener opens one spade, responder bids one no trump, um, opener rebids two clubs, and now responder bids two diamonds, OCP plays that as an asking bid in spades, um, just because it's a relay over, to, over the two club bid. Um, but normally, if, for example, the bidding goes one club, one heart, two hearts, the two hearts is an asking bid in hearts. And, and there, the ask relates to the heart suit, but the response won't necessarily. OK, so all of the um, asking bid responses are done in steps above the ask or above any interference that comes uh, after the ask. Interference we'll deal with later on, but they're step responses. So you have a one step response, two step response, three step response and so on. Uh, and each of those step responses is assigned a particular meaning. OK, so very briefly, um, there are some times where even pass and double or redouble become responses. 
and in fact pass and double or redouble can even be asking bids um, uh, we'll cover that in a lot more detail when we get to dealing with interference over asking bids which comes towards the end of the section of this teaching series on uh, asking bids the next thing is is that uh, asking bids are asking very specific questions and they're normally getting very specific responses um, for example if if the bidding I mentioned the bidding sequence of one club one heart two hearts uh, that two hearts bid is is an asking bid called gamma which is asking specifically about the length and quality of responders heart suit responders shown a heart suit with one heart and two hearts is asking about it and for example the stepped the one step response would show no top honor in hearts but with any potential length a two step response shows exactly a five card heart suit with one top honor the three step response would show exactly a five card suit with two or three top honors the four step response shows a six card heart suit with one top honor the five step response which would be three hearts over two hearts is uh, is showing a six card suit with exactly two honors two of the top three honors so you can see they're asking very specific questions and getting very specific responses um, there are a range of different asking bids that are asking different sorts of questions in different situations but they are all uh, the same in the sense that they're, they're making a very specific request for information so none of these none of these asking bids uh, and particularly the asking bid responses um, are sort of wishy-washy in terms of in the sense that you can responder or, or teller as we call them can actually if you like make a judgment as to what to show um, I'm not saying that never happens but uh, normally there is a set response that they should give and that's the response that they ought to give okay if you think uh, um, that was complicated enough <coughs> okay so the range that the responses can have can change depending on the situation um, so as I've mentioned there we have an asking bid called beta which is asking about the number of controls teller has in their hand we count an ace as two controls and a king as one control um, <coughs> if responders are past hand um, we tend to use a scale that starts naught one two three four um, if their range is intermediate or their range is completely unknown then we use the general school school sorry the general range which is naught two three four five if however teller has already shown four or more controls in response to a previous asking bid for example there's no point having a range that says naught to two three four five because it's impossible that they're going to use the first two step responses so in that case we'd use a scale the strong scale which starts naught to four five six seven okay anybody got any questions so far on stepped responses um, and and how those work let me find an example just to give you an idea
Okay, so here we have a hand. Um, North is going to open one club, which is uh, any 16 plus, almost. South has a positive response. They've got nine points. So they're going to show their five card heart suit. North doesn't like hearts. He's not interested in hearts, but they're going to bid one spade. Now, this is a this is an asking bid called Alpha, which is asking about North's spade suit. And it's asking South whether they've got primary support for spades, which is four small or three to a top honor. And it's also asking them at the same time how many controls they've got in their hand. So um, South here is going to make the three-step response. In other words, the one-step response will be one no trump. The two-step response would be two clubs. They're actually going to bid two diamonds, which shows spade support but only 0 to 3 controls. So there's an example of a step response. Um, the, the one no trump bid would show over one spade, would show no support for spades and 0 to 3 controls. The two club bid would have shown no support for spades and four or more controls. The two diamond bid is covered there. The two heart bid would show spade support and four or more controls. And there are actually more step responses beyond that, which I won't go into now, um, for hands with very good spade support and four or more controls. Um, but we'll come to those when we look at alpha. So there's an example of uh, step responses. Any questions so far? Okay. The next thing. I've mentioned beta. Okay, so when we're talking about the general number of controls that a hand has, we're looking at not aces and kings individually, but all together. In other words, we count an ace as worth two controls and a king as worth one control. Um, I'll come back to singleton kings a bit later. Uh, we tend not to, not to uh, count those. Um, or certainly my recommendation is that we don't. Um, okay, so... The beta and zeta asking bids and alpha to a certain extent are also inquiring about are all inquiring about the total number of controls that a partner has in their hand. So here we would say that the north hand has eight controls in their hand because they've got four aces, each of which is worth two controls. The south hand has um, three controls for the three kings. The west hand has one control, and the east hand, unfortunately, has none at all. Um, okay, so that's the general number of controls. So if you if you hear reference to asking bids like beta and zeta, that's the sort of question that they're asking, is how many controls you have in your hand. Um, okay. Okay, so suit quality, we're normally dealing with the number of top honours. Ace, king and queen are top honours, the jack isn't a top honour. Um, so we're dealing with the number of top honours and also the length of the suit. Um, so 
if you see an example where I show um, that a bid say shows two top honors and a four card suit, then that could be ace king xx or king queen xx or ace queen xx or um, that's it. But what it can't be is ace to five. If it says four, then it's four. Um, there are some asking bids where we're even including singleton, doubleton, and three card suits in that kind of equation. But if it shows high, high X, then we're talking about a three card suit with two top honors. Um, if we're talking about high, high, then we're talking about a doubleton, two top honors, doubleton, like king, queen, ace, king, ace, queen. Um, there are times when we are also interested in whether partner has the jack or not, but those are specific responses. Um, for example, a length known gamma is also asking about whether partner has the jack. Um, eta, which is effectively a length known gamma, is also normally including whether partner has the jack or not particularly if they've got a top honor as well. <coughs> um, okay, so that's suit quality. Any questions on that before I move on? Okay. Okay, so um, Gamma is always asking about partner's suit. And so here, um, we're talking about at least a five card suit, but it could be potentially longer. So normally with Gamma, we have a minimum set, a minimum length for a given sequence. Most of the time, the minimum length is five. But for example, if partners open to week two, we'll assume that it's six. Um, uh, sometimes it might even be four, because we can have gamma responses over the two diamond opening, where um, uh, responder makes one of the two-way transfers. And here they could have two four card suits, but they might have two six card suits. So the set length would be four in those circumstances. Um, so normally when we're talking about gamma, the minimum length of the suit is determined by the bidding thus far. Um, and so you will see references to minimum length, minimum length plus one, minimum length plus two and so on for the various step responses. Any questions on suit length? Okay, so here, for example, that two diamond response um, showing spade support and naught to three controls, um, at this stage, that could be as far as north is concerned, it could be three to the king. It could be four small. In fact, it could be five to the king. Um, because if south has naught to three controls, uh, they will always be responding to diamonds if they've got spade support, no matter how good it is. Um, Okay, they've responded one heart here, so it's unlikely they've got five spades. But at this stage, North will not know exactly what South has, because it could be four small, it could be three to an honor, it could be four to an honor. Um, it's unlikely to be a five card suit. Okay. More terminology. Okay, so there is one asking bid called Epsilon, which we only use once we've agreed a trump suit. 
and Epsilon is asking about the degree of control that partner has in one of the side suits, i.e. not the trump suit, but one of the side suits. And when we're talking about degree of control, uh, we're talking about um, singletons and voids and even doubletons, as well as honor controls. So we're talking about whether partner can stop the first, second or third round of the suit. <coughs> so if you see a response uh, in an explanation that says um, that partner's got third round control, this might be a doubleton, it might be three to the queen, it might be four to the queen, it might be five to the queen, it might even be the queen doubleton because that's two kinds of third round control they've got the queen and they've got a doubleton however if they had the singleton queen they would show that as second round control because they can actually stop the second round control by virtue of having a singleton and the queen being third round control doesn't really enter into the equation because second round control being able to trump the suit trumps the singleton being the queen so like I said degree of control is interested in shortages shortages as well as top honors um, okay so sometimes we combine degrees of control or we can show two types of degrees of control so in the example hand there, um, uh, they've got ace, queen, jack to five spades, king, jack to four hearts, queen, doubleton in clubs, and the stiff ace, king of clubs. Sorry, queen, doubleton of diamonds, and the stiff ace, king of clubs. So there we would say that they've got first and third round controls because they've got the ace and the queen. They've got second round control of hearts and third round control of diamonds because they've got queen doubleton and they've got first second and third round control of clubs because they've got the stiff ace king so they can stop it with the ace they can stop it with the king and they can rough the third round so they got first second and third round control and if we have the option we always show all the degrees of control that we can so if you've got first and third round control we wouldn't show that as first round control only we would always show the third round control as well um, similarly if supposing that hand had king queen xx in hearts instead of king jack they would show second and third round control um, because they've got the queen as well So again, some of these degrees of control can be of different types. So a holding of ace x, we would, we would say has first and third round control because they can win the first round with the ace and they can rough the third round because they've only got two of them. Um, and as I've said there, we always, almost always show all of the degrees of control that we can. Um, preemptive interference is about the only thing that stops us from doing that but we'll come to that when we look at interference okay any question on degrees of control as I've said during the explanation there um, a lot of these relate to specific asking bids degrees of control we're always looking at epsilon uh, length of the suit we're normally looking at gamma or and so on um, controls generally we're normally looking at beta or zeta and to a lesser extent alpha and so on 
any question on anything I've covered so far? Okay. <coughs> okay, so there are some asking bids that, that effectively don't have repeat asks, but most of them do. Um, sometimes the repeat ask might actually be a different asking bid. Um, for example, supposing it was essential to North to find out exactly what uh, South had in spades here, um, they could make a bid of two spades. Now, you might think that would be a repeat alpha ask, but actually a repeat alpha ask over a positive response um, is called sigma. And sigma is, is a completely separate uh, asking bid that asks teller to clarify exactly how good their holding in spades was. So this two spade bid would be would be sigma. Um, And now South is going to bid three clubs here, which would show exactly three to a top honour in spades. So that's the two-step response. The one-step the one step response would show four small or five small. And the three-step response would show a three-card support for spades, but with two top honours. So at this stage now, North knows that South's got exactly um, three to the king in spades. They, he also knows they've got five card hearts. And he also knows already that South has got three controls. Oh, sorry, not to three controls, rather. OK, so most asking bids have repeats of some sort or other. But sometimes those repeat asks are actually a different asking bid. Um, and when I say repeat asks, I'm normally talking about repeat asks in the same suit. Um, but we can have repeat asks in a different suit, which are almost always a different asking bid. And again, we'll come to those in more detail when we get to those specific asking bids. Okay, so I'm just going to do undo a couple of bids here. Um, because actually, I don't, I don't think North would bother with a, um, a Sigma ask on that hand. Um, but as you'll see a bit later on, we may well end up making repeat asks, particularly Epsilon quite often gets repeat asks. Um, if we want to clarify what kind of control partner is showing. OK, so if we're talking about repeat asks in Epsilon, um, supposing the first response gets a, a response showing second and third round control, a repeat ask, a repeat Epsilon in that suit. Um, and it, as I've said there, it doesn't have to be immediate. Uh, it could be later on in the sequence. It would be asking, uh, we know what kind the second round control is. That will always be the king if they've shown third round control as well. But it's asking what kind of third round control partner has, because it might be King X Doubleton, 
which would be a shortage. It might be King Queen X, which would be an honor. It might be King Queen Stiff, which would be both. And it might be King Queen XX, i.e. at least a four card suit without the Jack. And it might be King Queen Jack X with, with the Jack. And all of those are kinds of second and third round control. And they are all potential responses to a repeat Epsilon in that suit. And as I've said in that second paragraph, um, if, if Teller showed one particular degree of control with the first ask, then it's always asking what kind of control that is, whether a first round control is the ace or a void, for example. Um, if the, the first epsilon in that suit showed two degrees of control, we always know that the higher degree of control is going to be the honor and honor. But so we're asking what kind of control the lower degree of control is. So if they've shown first and third round control, it's asking what kind of third round control. OK, any question on degrees of control and repeat asks generally and specifically in relation to epsilon? Okay, hold on to your hats, guys, because this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Um, really, there so far, we've just been introducing the terminology that's used in the website notes uh, and which you will see in these lessons. Um, now we're going to have a look at the rules and guidelines that underpin all of the asking bids. These are probably the most essential uh, part of today's lesson. So these are absolutely essential learning. It doesn't matter if you don't learn them tonight. Um, you can look them up on the website. Uh, there's a whole page as an introduction to asking bids. Um, and they are all shown, everything that I'm covering tonight is shown there in considerably more detail than I'm giving it here tonight. Um, and uh, you can look them up there. Okay, here we go. Okay, the one essential thing about asking bids is that it's absolutely no good to us if there is ever any doubt as to which asking bid is being used at any one time. And most of the rules and guidelines I'm going to give you in a minute are all to do with um, basically determining which asking bids have priority over other asking bids um, and which asking bid is being used in, in a particular situation. Because if you're not sure whether it's alpha or theta, then it's no good because you're going to give potentially the wrong response. Um, so, so these rules are solely to setting concrete effectively what asking bids are being used in any particular situation. So there I've set out the relative importance of the various asking bids because basically all of the asking bids are um, concerned with establishing one of those three things. They're either to do with agreeing a trump suit, finding out how many controls partner has in their hands as a whole, or finding out specifically um, what degree of control partner has in a particular suit. So all the asking bids, that's the sort of things that they're dealing with. So the most important thing is agreeing trumps. 
the next most important thing is finding out partner's general level of controls. And the least important thing is finding out the degree of control that they have in a side suit. Now, that is not a straitjacket. That doesn't mean to say that every single asking bid sequence will always follow that sequence. All that is determining is which asking bids have priority or take precedence over other asking bids in a given sequence. So, for example, the one spade bid here in the sequence that's shown on the hand here is asking about spades. It can't be asking about partner's hearts. It can't be asking about the general level of controls. It can't be asking about the specific degree of control that South has in spades. Because agreeing a trump suit is the highest priority. So a positive, a, over a positive response, a bid in a side suit uh, is normally asking about partner's degree of support and number of controls in that suit. It's a because Trump asking bids have precedence over asking about general controls and they have precedence over asking about degrees of control in a side suit. In fact, as you'll see, we can't use Epsilon, which is asking about degrees of control in a side suit. We can't use that unless we've agreed Trumps. If we haven't yet agreed Trumps, then you can't use Epsilon at all, ever. It's just not in our, our dictionary for that particular sequence. If we agree Trumps, then potentially Epsilon is available. OK. So that's the first thing. Um, so the first thing to establish is that there is never any doubt, absolutely never, any doubt about which asking bid is which in a given situation. So just to explain why um, those three things are in the order that they are in, okay. We can ask about general controls very often without agreeing trumps. But there's no point trying to find out about the degree of control partner has in a side suit unless we know what the side suits are. So agreeing trumps is the most important thing. Um, and all of the um, asking bids are geared towards um, there are more trump asking bids than any other kind of asking bid for that reason, because there are various different ways in which case in which we might want to try and establish a suit agreement. Um, so we need to know what trumps are before we can start asking about what kind of degree of control partner has in clubs. We need to have agreed a suit other than clubs as trumps before we can ask that. OK. So normally, we said that the, the second most important thing was establish the, the general degree of control partner has, um, the, sorry, the general number of controls partner has in their hand. Um, as being the second most important thing. Sometimes we end up asking about how many controls partner has before we ask, we, before we start um, trying to agree a trump suit. Um, that ha actually happens more often than you might think. But that's not because agreeing trumps is somehow become less important. It's because for reasons of space saving, it makes sense to ask about 
controls before we start looking at the trump suit um and similarly we normally end up asking about the number of controls partner has in their hand and that gives us an idea as to what degrees of control they're likely to have in a particular suit um but that doesn't straightjacket us there are times when uh, we end up asking about specific degrees of control in the side suit and then we might even ask about general levels of controls later on or even not at all um, there is scope for that happening but normally uh, the hooks in the system for the asking bid beta which is asking about the general level controls are set most easily for that to be asked before we start asking about degrees of control in side suits. Okay, so lastly, um, finding about that, that's not saying that finding out about degrees of control in side suits isn't important. Sometimes it's absolutely critical. Um, to the success of an asking bid sequence and critical to what level we end up playing at um, but in terms of our priorities where the asking bids are concerned it has absolutely the lowest level of priority um, compared to agreeing trumps and finding out about general level controls this is mainly concerned with if there is a potential conflict uh, for example, you will, when we look at beta, you will see that four clubs can often be an asking bid called beta. Uh, and there are specific situations where um, four clubs will be a beta ask. But four clubs could also be an epsilon ask, potentially. So the point about the degree of priority, um, just just one minute, second, second, Amy. The the point about degrees of priority is that if we haven't found out how many controls partner has in their hand, then four clubs beta would take precedence over four clubs epsilon, because general controls is more important than specific controls. Okay, any questions so far? Sorry, go on. No, 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 it's, it's, no, no, it's not. Sorry, guys, just, sorry, right, just bear with me a minute. No, no, it's not. I just didn't put it out because you hadn't run out. Okay, so we'll assume that there are no questions thus so far. Right, okay, Ellie. Um, the advice that the website gives and that I would give is that, generally speaking, singleton kings we do not count as a control unless either partner has shown a reasonably strong holding in that suit. In other words, if they've made an asking bid, a trump asking bid, in that suit um, then I would count a singleton king as a control if partners asked me about my spade support I might not have spade support if I've got a singleton king but if they subsequently ask me about how many controls I've got I would include the king of singleton king of spades as a control because the the assumption is that partners got at least a five card spade suit um, that they're interested in playing as trumps. Even if we haven't agreed that as trumps, I would include the singleton king of spades as a as a control. Um, similarly, if partner has shown a very strong balanced hand, I would tend to include singleton kings as controls. 
because partner is is likely not certain but likely to have at least the ace or the queen of any given suit if they're very strong balanced and therefore um, uh, the king is pulling its weight potentially even as a singleton but supposing south here had the singleton king of diamonds I wouldn't be including that as a fourth control over this uh, one spade alpha ask which is asking um, whether I've got support for spades but also how many controls I have and if I had four or more controls I would be giving a two heart response rather than a two diamond response but here personally I wouldn't be including if I had the singleton king of diamonds I wouldn't be including it as a control at this stage of the auction I might upgrade my hand later on if partner suggests that they've got um, a strong holding in diamonds um, but generally speaking I wouldn't I am aware that there are some OCP pairs who routinely do count singleton kings as controls and, and that's a matter for them ultimately and ultimately it's a matter for any given OCP partnership how they treat this and as long as you are on the same wavelength um, with partner uh, you should be okay um, I think it's a mistake personally uh, but I'm powerless to dictate that to to other OCP pairs um, you know that the system specification is that you shouldn't but if some pairs decide they want to then that's fine they have to stand or fall by the results they get using that method okay Ellie alrighty okay where were we so as I've said before this order of priority is not a straitjacket and it doesn't say that you have to use the asking bids in a given order but it does determine and it does control what a given asking bid means and what it is and therefore what set of responses you're going to get so it's no good um, you making a, an asking bid of three clubs and you say well actually I would like this three clubs to be um, iota in clubs when actually you've already agreed another suit as trumps and three clubs is going to be beta or epsilon um, you you need to uh, stick to that those order of priorities and uh, other things which determine which asking bids are being used and if if you can't make a three club bid um, in one sense then you have to do something else and then maybe ask with four clubs if you want to make an epsilon ask for example and you can't because three clubs would be a bid called relay beta um, then you maybe have to ask make the beta ask first and then make a later asking clubs to find out what degree of control partner has in the suit so it does control sometimes what you can ask at a particular level but it doesn't straightjacket you to to bid things in a particular order asker is in control of what asking bids are used um, and depending on what they need to find out about partners hand okay where were we okay so take that situation here um, we've agreed spades as trumps 
And supposing the last response um, was three no trumps, and we didn't yet know how many controls partner had in their hand, then four clubs beta would take precedence over four clubs epsilon because finding out about how many controls they have is more important than finding out what degree of control they've got in clubs. But if we had already established exactly how many controls partner had in their hand, then beta has gone out the window and now four clubs would be epsilon. But because four clubs beta takes precedence over four clubs epsilon, it doesn't mean to say you have to bid four clubs over the three no trump response. It simply determines which asking bid four clubs is. Okay, hopefully that's that's made that point fairly clear. Anybody got any questions about um, those order of priorities and uh, how that works? Again, we'll we'll come back to that in more detail when we actually look at which specific asking bids take precedence over others in given situations. Okay, so um, now we're going to get on to the business of suit agreement. And when I say um, we can't do certain things until we've agreed a suit as trumped, I mean agreeing a suit as trumped by means of an asking bid sequence. And that is because for all of the trump asking bids, there are rules about what constitutes a positive and a negative response. In other words, which responses agree the suit as trumped and which responses do not agree the suit as trumped. And therefore, the question of what trump suit we're going to play in is still an open question. <coughs> okay, so for example, in this uh, sequence here, North has made an alpha ask with one spade, and South has made uh, a response that shows spade support, at least four small or three to an honor, and naught to three controls. It doesn't matter that they've only got naught to three controls. The fact is, they've got spade support, and that agrees the suit as trumps. So in response to alpha, um, the first two-step responses, the one-step and one step response and the two-step response, are called negative responses to alpha because they don't show spade support or insufficient for the purposes of alpha. But the three-step or higher responses all agree the suit as trumps. So as we look at each of the uh, Trump asking bids in turn, you will see that there are some responses that are negative responses and some that are positive. Um, there are some Trump asking bids, Gamma and Eta, for example, where the mere fact that the asking bid is used agrees the suit as Trumps provisionally. So if, if North had bid two hearts here instead of one spade, that would be an asking bid called gamma. And in most circumstances, the mere fact that they make the asking bid agrees the suit as trumps because they wouldn't ask about partners' hearts unless they had sufficient support in the north hand to agree the suit as trumps. Um, there are ways of backing out of that, and we, can, uh, we will look at those in more detail when we look at gamma. Um, but eta is the same. If we use eta, then almost always we are agreeing that suit as trumps. Um, and although there are places where we can back out of a, of a gamma ask, um, uh, there aren't normally when it comes to eta asks, because eta is asking about 
partner's known four card suit and we wouldn't use that ask unless we had four card support ourselves or better Okay, there's one asking bid Zeta, as mentioned there, which actually unilaterally sets the suitor's trumps. It doesn't care what partner's uh, holding in the suit is. Um, and as I've said there, Gamma and Eta, which are asking about it, merely um, agrees the suitor's trumps, no matter what the response. Um, but most of the other Trump asking bids like uh, Alpha, Theta, Iota, Delta, all have positive and negative responses. Uh, some responses agree the suitor's trumps, some responses don't. And it's always the shorter responses that don't agree the suitor's trumps and the longer responses that do. It's never the case that a more expensive response agrees the suit sorry, doesn't agree the suit, where a shorter response would do. Okay, so the general rule, and it's not universal, um, the general rule is that a, any holding that shows uh, three to a top honor or four small always agrees the suitor's trumps. Um, it is the case that two top honors, Doubleton, sometimes does. Um, and as I said before, sometimes the mere fact that an asking as a suit is asked about sets the suitor's trumps. Okay, any question on positive and negative responses to Trump asking bids? Okay. I mentioned before um, that we uh, sometimes use different ranges for uh, a given asking bid in particular situations. Um, just to explore that in a little bit more detail. The reason why we do this is is that finding enough space to ask all the questions that we want to ask is often a problem in asking bid sequences. And so trying to conserve bidding space is a real priority for us. Um, sometimes you've only got a couple of questions that you need to ask and you've got loads of space in which to ask it and it's not a problem. But sometimes, sometimes you run out, you simply run out of space. And uh, sometimes you end up having to make a decision on incomplete information because even the asking bid sequence um, hasn't allowed you to ask all the questions. And that might just be because it's a particularly expensive sequence. It might be because interference. Um, or sometimes it can even be that you've got a, an unexpectedly expensive response to a previous asking bid that ends up cutting out all of your space for making subsequent asks and that's just the luck of the draw but as far as possible we try and conserve space where we can and this is where the different ranges come in and actually there's a seventh <laughs> a seventh kind of beta there now which uh, these notes don't reflect um, but which I will cover when we come to beta, uh, which is exclusion beta. Um, and uh, so 
there are those six ranges, and some of them are very rare. Uh, the super range, for example, which is 0 to 6, 7, 8, 9, um, pretty much only occurs in one situation, which is where um, opener has, has opened one club, uh, partner's bid one diamond, opener's made what's called a delta ask, which is a jump shift over the negative response of one diamond, uh, which forces an asking bid sequence. And that normally shows a, a 24 point plus hand. Um, but if responder makes that delta ask and then subsequently hands over the captaincy, it is possible that responder will end up asking how many controls opener has. Uh, and so we can potentially have that super scale, but it, it occurs maybe once a year with all the people who play OCP, um, or even less often than that. Um, uh, I have used it, but not since uh, Jason Hackett and I were playing together. Okay, so the normal ranges for beta are normal, weak, special, weak, and strong. Those appear fairly regularly. The range response um, does occur in uh, a couple of situations in the simple system, but mostly it's in the uh, complex version of OCP, um, which this teaching series is not teaching but I do cover it at the end of that teaching series. Um, so the complex system uses the range beta ask fairly often, but the simple system only uses it in a couple of situations. So mostly we're talking about the normal weak, special weak and strong scales. And uh, those are all aimed at not, not wasting bidding space, but also maximizing the degree of precision that we need when we do need it. Um, so for example, supposing North bids two hearts here, this is a relay. The fact that, that North has shown a heart suit doesn't matter here. Two hearts is a relay over the two diamond bid. And this is asking, this is a bid called relay beta, which is asking how many controls South has in their hand. Oops, sorry. Just bear with me a minute. Now, I mentioned before that we use the normal beta scale when uh, South when partner is either known to be intermediate or their strength is completely unknown, which is the case here. But actually, what you must remember is that North's, sorry, South's two diamond response already showed naught to three controls. So here we would actually use the weak beta scale because partners, we know that the maximum number of controls South can have is three, and we need to find out whether they've got naught, one, two, or three, and it matters uh, that we find out exactly how many controls they have, if possible. So here, we'd be using the weak scale. So two spades would show no controls, two no trumps, one, three clubs, two, and three diamonds would show three controls. So that's an example of, of the range that we use changing according to the circumstances. If, for example, North had bid one no trump over the one heart positive, that would also be asking about how many controls uh, South had. But now we would be using the normal scale of naught to two controls, three controls, four controls, five controls. So South would make the two-step response over one no trump and also bid two diamonds to show exactly three controls. And now North could ask about spades with two spades, which wouldn't be the alpha asking bid. It would be a different one called theta and still find out about the spade suit. So that's an, also an example of um, these 
rules not being a straight jacket to you, North can choose whether they ask about spades first and then ask about controls, or whether they ask about controls first and then ask about the spades. They can choose which way they want to go according to what they think is going to be the most effective and the cheapest sequence, um, but they're not straight jacketed. The rules simply determine that the one spade bid here is asking about spades rather than anything else, and that the one no trump bid is asking about controls rather than about anything else. Okay, any questions so far about ranges? Just to clarify a bit more about beta. So as I've said there, that strong scale is normally when partners shown four or more controls already. Um, it's not often, apart from two diamond openings, that we end up with the weaker hand making the beta ask uh, when partners known to be 16 plus. Um, it does happen, but it's not very often. So hopefully that's clarified a little bit about the ranges. Uh, has anybody got any questions there before we move on? Okay. Another couple of general things here. So, the way that asking bid sequences tend to progress is that we try and agree trumps. Um, if we do agree trumps, then uh, the asking bids tend to continue until whoever's asking the questions returns to the agreed trump suit at game level or above. Um, sometimes that might be an obviously invitational bid, i.e. a jump to the five level, but normally if partner signs off in the trump suit at game level or at slam level, that will end the auction. Because any other bids in a side suit will be asking bids. Um, generally speaking. We will come to the exceptions in a minute. This is the first one. Okay, uh, I said that these rules and, and the guidelines don't straightjacket you. Sometimes, for example, uh, North might decide here that it's easier for them to agree hearts by asking about hearts um, because they can do that fairly cheaply. Um, so they might, supposing they bid one no trump asking about controls, partner bids two diamonds showing three controls. North might decide that it's actually much easier for them to agree hearts cheaply with two hearts and then they can easily find out about what partner has in other suits particularly their long trump suit and then they're going to end up jump shifting into their trump suit at a later stage in the bidding and as I've said there that is all, almost always to play. If you jump shift into a new suit or a, having agreed one suit, you jump shift into a different suit, it won't be an asking bid because um, we would never jump shift for an asking bid later in the sequence. Um, it's just not necessary. Uh, so sometimes for economy, the captain might lie by pretending to agree one suit is trumps while all the while knowing that they're actually intending to play in something different. 
uh, and that's a perfectly acceptable uh, mechanism or strategy to use as long as you leave yourself enough space to do it. Uh, if, if, if you can only jump shift into a suit by bidding at the six level when you know that the five level is the limit, then it's no good. You've, you've left it too late and, and mucked up the, the asking bid sequence. But as long as you leave yourself enough room to jump shift, you can employ that strategy. Um, the other thing is, as we'll see when we get to Epsilon, if you make an Epsilon ask in a side suit and make a repeat Epsilon ask, a third bid in the Epsilon ask is usually to play. Um, because you found out by that point exactly what partner has in that side suit. Um, the only exception to that would be when you don't know how many controls partner has and the repeat alpha ask sh displayed that they have a sh had a singleton or void shortage and now we would use that third ask as beta if we didn't already know how many controls they had. Um, but if we did already know how many controls they had, then that third ask would be to play because we've established exactly what their holding is in the suit. And if we make a third bid in that suit, it will be because that's where we want to play. Okay, the next question is, uh, if there's no questions about jump shifts and, and agreeing one suit and ending up playing in a different suit, um, which we'll come to in more detail when we look at the asking bids themselves, is what sequence do you choose? And this is the big question um, that people have to start with because they're unsure how to use these asking bids to best effect. Um, uh, and as I've said there, experience and judgment um, is the biggest thing here. Um, there is a learning curve when it comes to asking bids and uh, choosing the best route and uh, sometimes the best route might be quite obscure and, and not obvious to start with um, but you would see that a more experienced user of asking bids would actually find it whereas it's, it's not one that you would think of if you were new to asking bids and you just have to accept um, that they've paid you know somebody's who's more experienced has paid that coin in in age and uh, trial and error learning the system um, and that's just something you have to go through so uh, economy is is always worth striving for because trying to find the cheapest sequence usually means that you have uh, the most space to ask all the questions that you need. So sometimes uh, one particular suit might be the most important thing for you to ask in terms of your priorities, but because it would be a very expensive ask, it actually makes sense to ask about something else first and come back to that more important suit later on when you can make what you think will be a much cheaper ask. Um, uh, for example, if you look at this hand, uh, I said at the start that, that North can choose whether they ask about controls first and then ask about spades, or whether they ask about the spades first with alpha and then ask about uh, controls with relay beta. So you can see here that the we end up with South's response of three diamonds after um, North has asked both of those questions using Alpha. If uh, um, North decided to ask about controls first, they would bid one no trump over one heart, so that would ask about controls. South would bid two diamonds. North would now make this bid called Theta. Uh, in, with two spades, which would ask more specifically exactly what kind of holding South had in spades. And now 
uh, the four step response would show uh, um, two top honors doubleton or three to a top honor and that would be a three heart response over two spades so actually you can see that the the sequence using beta first actually ends up being one bid more expensive because Sal's going to end up responding uh, three hearts rather than three diamonds. <coughs> the difference to that is that uh, at that point, North would know that South had exactly three to the king in spades. Whereas if they'd used the theta sequence, um, sorry, the alpha sequence rather, they would know that North had uh, naught to three controls and they would know that South had at least four to a top, sorry, four small or three to a top honor in spades. Um, and then the two heart ask about controls would elicit that they had exactly three controls. So they would be one thing cheaper, but they wouldn't know exactly what South had in spades. So it swings and roundabouts. Um, and sometimes the cheaper sequence, you don't get quite as uh, uh, precise a response or a precise degree of knowledge about partner's hand. Um, An experience will decide which one you choose. <coughs> okay, uh, luck does a play a part. Uh, there is no asking bids is not, unfortunately, an exact science. Um, uh, even I've been playing the system for um, 40 odd years uh, and I've been using asking bids um, for at least that length of time um, and even I get it wrong sometimes um, where I end up choosing a particular route for my asking bid sequence and um, wish I'd done it differently when we get to the end because I'm ending up having to guess or make a punt or sign off at a lower level because I can't afford to ask um, the one question that would perhaps make it certain that we could play in a slam rather than a game. Um, sometimes you will get thrown by an unexpectedly expensive response. Um, I can remember one time playing with uh, Esther. Um, uh, when she came up with a 13 step response to gamma um, I can't remember the exact sequence but uh, um, that's a hideously expensive response because she had something like 9 to the queen in hearts when I was expecting that she would only have 5 to the queen <laughs> or five to five, a 5 card suit and she turned up with a 9 card suit or something um, so the sequence was, was outrageously expensive. And sometimes you're just going to get thrown. You just have to shrug your shoulders. Um, uh, and it's, that is just luck. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it, really. Okay, so, so learning, learning the underlying rules, which is what we're trying to cover today, and which we will cover, there are some underlying rules that are specific to each asking bid, so we'll, we will cover those when we get to those asking bids. Um, uh, it really is worth the effort to learn the asking bids, learn the ranges, learn the step responses for each range. Um, you won't learn those overnight, uh, but it really is worth the effort because very often asking bids allow you to reach contracts that nobody else will get to. Um, uh, I'm not saying that, that this hand that's 
we've been in the middle of bidding here is necessarily one of them. Um, but I'll give you an example of, of how this sequence might continue. Um, so here we've asked with alpha, with one spade, got a response that shows some degree of spade support, at least three small, sorry, four small or three to a top honor. We've then asked about partners' controls, um, got a specific response with three diamonds that shows exactly three controls. Uh, so now, where do we go from here? Um, uh, we perhaps want to find out about what partners' hearts are, um, because if they've got, say, the king and the queen of hearts, that will provide two discards for some of our minor suit losers. So we might here make an epsilon ask in hearts. And you see at this stage, for example, when we go back to the, the degree of priority of asking bids, I mentioned that epsilon isn't possible until we've agreed a suit as trumps. Well, we agreed a suit as trumps with two diamonds. That agreed spades as trumps. And uh, we've actually established exactly how many uh, controls partner has with the three diamond response. And now it turns out that actually epsilon is the only thing left in our arsenal. The only asking bids that we can make now are epsilons and repeat epsilons. Because although it's the lowest level of priority, it's the only thing left because we've asked everything else. We've established trumps, we've established general controls. So degree of control inside suits is the only thing that we have left to ask. We know that partners got three controls because of the three diamond response. What we don't know is where those controls are. We know that it must be three kings, but we don't know which one they're missing. So three hearts is hopefully going to pinpoint one or all three of them. So three hearts is asking about heart controls. Uh, South is going to show second round control of hearts. And that will be a, a three step response. So that will be four clubs showing second round control of, of hearts. Uh, so now we know that they've got the king of hearts because it can't be anything else. Um, and now we're going to ask, we might ask about diamonds now because it's the next cheapest thing we can ask. So here, again, the four-step, um, sorry. Sorry, the, uh, the three-step response is going to show um, second round control, but this time it's a doubleton. But North doesn't know that, so he might think that South has got three to the king in diamonds. But either way, he can clarify this uh, potentially by making another asking bid in diamonds. So this is a repeat epsilon in diamonds asking South what kind of second round control they've got in diamonds. We didn't need to do that with hearts because we know that South has got five five card hearts at least. So that second round control had to be a king. Couldn't be a shortage. But the diamond might be the king. It might be a shortage. Um, uh, so this is showing that they're 
for no Trump response was actually showing a singleton diamond. So now, essentially, um, North has a very, very accurate picture of South's hand. Uh, we know that they've got the King of Spades, the King of Hearts, and the King of Clubs. They've got a singleton diamond. Um, they probably have either four to the king in hearts and three card clubs, or three to the king in, sorry, in spades, uh, sorry, four to the king in spades and three card clubs, or three to the king in spades and four card clubs. It'll be one of those two. So at this point, uh, South might think, well, okay, my... Uh, um, two of clubs is going to go on the king of hearts. I can rough two rounds of diamonds in dummy, even on a trump lead. And south's king of clubs is going to take care of my other club loser. So actually I can potentially make uh, seven spades here. And actually that's what south should bid, because he can effectively write down South's hand in all that matters and it doesn't matter whether they've got four spades and three clubs or three spades and four clubs even on a trump lead they can win the trump lead rough the diamonds um, come back to hand with the ace of hearts say rough another diamond and the only thing that's going to defeat seven spades would be um, something like a 5-1 split in clubs and you might think that's worth the risk if you didn't you could sign off in six spades if you do think it's worth the risk then that's great you bid seven spades um, okay any questions on that sequence hopefully that's given you some idea of the kind of uh, thought processes and introductions to the kind of thought processes that you need to go through with asking bid sequences. Uh, it's given you an example of a repeat ask in diamonds uh, and how you can work out a little bit about um, what kind of way to choose the sequence. Any questions? Okay, that last point is very important. For each asking bid, especially when you get to the higher levels, you need to work out what the likely responses are and what the maximum possible response partner might give is. In other words, if you've got the ace-king in a suit, you might think that the most they're going to be able to show is third round control with the queen, but of course they might have a singleton or void. And if you're not prepared for that, you could end up getting um, a much more expensive sequence than you're anticipating. So sometimes you need to work out when you actually have to stop asking and to give yourself room to sign off. Uh, and when you can afford to, uh, uh, to make another ask in a different suit. Okay, I'm just going to give you another. I'm just going to give you another couple of hands. I, I think we realistically it's 20 to 12 now. I don't think we're going to have time for a sensible uh, session of practice hands. Hopefully, Mr. Loot will be uh, having a practice session tomorrow, and hopefully, uh, you might be able to practice some of the asking bids there. But in the meantime, I'm just going to give you a flavor of um, how some of the asking bid sequences might work. So there we saw a one club sequence. <coughs> um, this is going to be slightly different.
We've got a one no, one no trump opening from east. And I know that south might bid two spades, but we'll assume that they're going to pass because of the vulnerability. Um, uh, west has a very nice hand here. Uh, various ways that they could bid it, but supposing they decide to bid three clubs. This would be an, an asking bid called alpha, just like the one spade bid in the previous hand. Um, last I looked, 9 and 4 is 12. Paula. Oh no, 9 and 4 is 13. You're absolutely right. Sorry. Okay, ignore that. Um, maths 101. Um, just imagine South didn't, sorry, East didn't have the jack of clubs. Uh, okay, I mentioned before that... Yes, okay, forget it, Paula. Okay, so I mentioned before that Alpha has more expensive responses than the uh, uh, four-step response. Uh, this is one here. That four-club response shows at least four to a top honor in clubs and exactly four controls. Four diamonds would show uh, five controls and so on. Um, so this is a way of showing very good support for the suit and a high number of controls as well. Uh, okay, so here, um, it's possible that uh, you might want to ask about other suits, but hearts is obviously the main priority here because that's where we've potentially got some losers. Um, we know that East has exactly four controls, so they must have two aces or an ace and two kings and in fact we know that they must have an ace and two kings because they've promised that they've got four to the king in clubs so they must have an ace and a king so we need to find out where they are so here um, we've no need for a beta ask Wes is going to Make an epsilon ask in hearts, um, asking what uh, degree of control East has in hearts, because the possibility of two or even three heart losers is looming large if they've got the ace, king of spades, and three small hearts. Um, we're struggling here. But they might have the right thing here. Um, Okay, so the four spade, the one step response to Epsilon shows either no control or first and second round control of hearts. Um, obviously, it's possible that that could be either here from West's point of view. Um, so... West has to decide what they're going to do over here um, because that's an ambiguous response. Actually, that's wrong. I'm sorry. Um, undo that. Sorry. Sorry. 
East is actually going to bid that, which is the uh, seven-step response, which shows first, second, and third round control. So now West knows, um, I forgot it was Ace King Doubleton is why, uh, West knows that East must have the Ace King Doubleton in hearts. Can't be anything else here. That's the only way they can have first, second, and third round control because West has got the queen. Um, so we know West knows that East has got the ace, king of hearts, stiff, and four to the king in clubs, or maybe even five to the king. Um, we know we've got no diamond losers, and but likewise we know that we must have a loser in spades because partner cannot also have the ace of spades. <coughs> so that was an example so now West just returns to the agreed trump suit with six clubs and that ends the auction um, that was an example of a much more expensive uh, response to four hearts than we might have imagined um, but fortunately, it didn't take us over six clubs. Um, but you can sometimes get caught out there. Okay, so any questions? Let me just... Uh, what are we going to lead here? We'll lead the Jack of Hearts. Okay, any questions about the hand? Like I said, just ignore the... Uh, um, the 13-point trump opener. I think when I last used these hands, um, I wasn't particularly bothered about variable no trump. But uh, Paul is right. You would normally open one diamond with that hand and you would get a different, uh, a slightly different sequence. Um, but actually, it would probably go one diamond, three clubs, and you'd actually end up with exactly the same sequence from there on. Okay, any questions? And we'll move on to another hand. Just trying to give you a flavour, not just of one club sequences here, um, but also of uh, where some of the hooks into asking bid sequences are uh, in the system. Um, this is quite a good example. So here, um, South's going to open one heart. Um, again, we'll decide that West isn't going to come in with some large number of spades because of the vulnerability. North's going to bid one no trump, which is the forcing no trump. Uh, South's going to rebid two diamonds. I mentioned earlier in the series that uh, once we start using asking bids, um, this bid is no longer um, showing a long, a weak suit with long spades. Uh, in fact, they would bid one spade rather than one no trump if they had that anyway. Uh, but this is now an asking bid. This is um, this is asking about hearts. And this is an asking bid called Gamma that I've mentioned already tonight. So this is asking about partner's suit. And the mere fact that North uses Gamma by bidding two spades agrees hearts as trumps. Uh, there are ways that they can potentially back off. Um, but we're not going to see one of those today. Uh, so this is showing um, only a five-card heart suit. This is a two-step response. Only a five-card heart suit and one of the top three honours. Um, so... Um, from North's point of view, we know that South has got five to the queen or five to the ace. But they haven't got five to the ace queen. So we know we've possibly got a heart loser or definitely got a heart loser, depending on whether they have the ace or the queen. Uh,
So now this is relay beta again. Uh, again, I'll explain these terms like relay beta when we get to beta. Um, but uh, briefly, any time that we've agreed a suit as trumps, a relay in the next suit over the bid that agrees the suit as trumps, we treat as beta if we need to. Uh, there are exceptions to that, but uh, we'll cover those when we come to it. Charging. No, it's charging it. Um, yes. My wife, after 25 years of being together, has just noticed that I'm a weird man. Um, I'm charging my watch by shining a very bright light on it because uh, it was nearly out of charge. Nope. It's uh, just charging it. Um, okay, so three dams asking about how many controls South has. Uh, because South's uh, known to be intermediate and we haven't shown or denied any particular number of controls yet, we're going to use the normal beta scale of 0 to 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so three hearts would show 0 to 2 controls, three spades would show 3, and so South is going to bid three low trumps which shows exactly four controls. <coughs> so, again, that can be um, the two missing aces from North's point of view, or it might be uh, an ace and two kings. It can't be four kings because North's got two of them. So now what? Um, we might... Uh, uh, we know how many controls we've agreed a, a trump suit so we've only again we've only got epsilon left so no reason not to pick the cheapest possible epsilon ask um no i'm going to ask in clubs first sorry uh, michael um i normally work on the principle of unless there's a really uh good reason um I tend to make the cheapest ask. Uh, here, the answer in clubs will tell me a lot about uh, what partner has in the other suits, uh, potentially. Um, Okay, so South has shown second and third round control of clubs. Um, from this, I now know two things. I know they've got exactly KX in clubs, and I know that they haven't got two aces because uh, they, they now must have the king of spades because they must have an ace and two kings. So we are missing either the ace of diamonds or the Ace of Hearts. Um, which one does make a slight difference? So now, I will make that ask in diamonds. Okay, so six diamonds is showing first round control of diamonds, but it's also denying having second or third round control of diamonds. So basically, this has to be at least ace to three. It can't be a shortage because they bid two diamonds over one no trump. Um, so we know they got ace to three or ace to four diamonds without the queen. And without, we know they haven't got the king already. Um, so there is a potential diamond loser, but hopefully that's going to go away on our clubs. But because we know that they've got the ace of diamonds, we also know they haven't got the ace of hearts. 
So we're just going to sign off here in six hearts. In practice, you would probably bid six hearts um, over the four no trump bid um, because you know we can't possibly make seven. Uh, we must be missing an ace somewhere. Um, and it must be in one of the red suits, and we know that partners got can't have a void in either of those red suits. Um, so it's a good bet to bid six hearts over four no trumps. Uh, the five diamond bid seemed like a good idea at the time, but actually it doesn't really add anything, and the answer commits us to playing in slam, even if partners got the queen of diamonds. Um, the only time that we would be able to uh, not play in slam here is if they had three small in diamonds, and they would bid five hearts over five diamonds, and now we could just stop there in five hearts. But really, that um, diamond ask um, doesn't uh, add much to us if partners got at least third round control, because we'd be forced to play in six diamonds regardless. OK, and West is going to lead the ten of spades. Uh, we're going to claim. OK. Any questions about that hand? Again, that's a useful Michael's question or suggestion of bidding four diamonds. <coughs> Actually ends up being quite useful. Because as you can see, the four diamond bid would have had a five diamond response, but it wouldn't actually tell us whether partner had the ace of hearts and the ace of diamonds and we were missing both of the black suit kings or whether partner had one of the black suit or had the black suit kings and only one of the uh, red aces and actually I judged that the four club bid was actually going to be more useful to me in terms of telling me about what was going on in the other suits the response to my four clubs ask told me about the king of spades and the king of clubs and told me that we must be missing one of the red aces. So actually it told me nearly everything I needed to know. Um, and as I've said, it doesn't really matter um, which of the red aces partner has. They must have one of them. They can't have both of them. Um, I'm going to want to play in six diamonds regardless. Um, if they've got the ace of hearts I'm going to take a chance on finding the queen of hearts because they must have the ace of sorry the, they probably have the queen of diamonds um, and uh, if they've got the ace of diamonds they must have the queen of hearts and that's the best thing ok if there's no questions Um, because I've got such a good heart fit, uh, I might end up um, having to rough something. Um, six no trumps is a perfectly good contract here. Um, but let me think, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, yeah, six no trumps is perfectly acceptable. Um, and arguably it's safer. Uh, Six hearts is potentially um, vulnerable to a diamond rough because you've got to concede a heart trick uh, if they leave diamonds. So if the diamonds are five one, six no trumps is definitely safer. Um, yeah, good point. Uh, I'm just trying to show the mechanism here. At the table, I might have... Um, considered six no trumps once I know that partners possibly got four card diamonds and especially once they bid six diamonds over five diamonds I might well or I probably would bid six no trumps rather than six hearts because I know the spades are solid the clubs are solid for four tricks um, and I'm not vulnerable to a rough regardless I've got first and second round control of all of the side suits 
Um, so as long as I can get four hearts, uh, four heart tricks, I've got a known four card, four tricks in clubs, and two tricks in diamonds and spades each. So yeah, good point, Phil. Any other questions? Right, guys, listen, it's uh, 12 o'clock. Um, I've had a long day. So if you don't mind, I think we're going to leave it there. Uh, like I said, hopefully John Lute is running a practice tomorrow. Um, and uh, hopefully he will have some good hands on which you can start practicing. Okay, thanks for coming, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next week, hopefully. Night all.